All righty, guys. Thanks for joining me. This is your host, ID Jester. Thank you so much for joining me. This is about season ticket baseball. Just came across this game. Actually, that's not true. I came across this game like a year and a half ago in the beta, downloaded it, and thought it was interesting, but kind of just fell out of love with it because of, I don't know, it just seemed like uh, the, uh, it was obviously in beta at the time, and or alpha, beta, whatever it was, it was early in development, and uh, it was too easy to get hits, it was too easy to get home runs, it was just, you know, I just said, ah, it just needs some more time in the cooker, and, and you know, all that. Uh, so, it's now been a year and a half or two years later, and it's been released, and I saw some of my sports sim buddies playing it on their channels. And I said, well, I should probably pick this up. Kirk Berglund, you know, he sh was talking about it. And a few other guys that I know, Bleacher Mums Gamering, um, uh, who else plays it? Uh, Dave Gardner plays it. He loves it. And so I picked it up. I picked up three seasons, got three season files, downloaded them, printed them out on the big card stock, you know, and ready to go and played a few games. And let me tell you, the game is super good now. The game is super solid, super fun, exciting, um, pretty quick to play as well. And, uh, yeah, it's a really solid game. I would highly recommend it. But, of course, there's got to be a but, right? Why does there always, always have to be a but, right? No. I want to say this first before I go on and talk about this. Season ticket baseball, for me, is two thumbs up. I would recommend it. everyone get it. I would recommend everyone try it out. You can download for free and play the game for free. There's like four different teams from two different seasons that you can download for free. You can download the PDF. You can download the rule books and the charts and everything for free. Try it out for yourself for free. For free. I would also recommend you buy some season files if you enjoy it. I bought three. Three season files. It's a great investment it's a great game there's nothing wrong with it okay but i have an issue with the game and i'm going to show you guys what the issue is and i'm going to show you guys some files that i've created to help get around this issue and i'm hoping to start a discussion maybe with the developer maybe the designer of the game and see if there's any of these options that he might add going forward okay game is great it's fun it's interesting it plays well it's smooth except for one part of the game and that is every time you roll a five on the six-sided dice you need to do a defensive check when you do a defensive check you then have to stop what you're doing find that defensive card and look on their little matrix on their chart uh, up in the top corner to see, you know, is it a double play? Is it a ground out? Is it a hit? Is it an error? Whatever the situation is. And of course, it's on a D6. Every time a five comes up on a D6, you have to stop what you're doing, find that player's card, search through the, the other stack or however you're doing it. I know Bleacher Bums Gaming says he has all of his cards out on the table. And then whenever somebody gets a lineup, he just pulls that player over. But so that way he has all the players out so he can just quickly scan through them and look at them. But you're talking about a huge footprint then because you need 18, minimum 18 cards out on your table. And these are not little tiny cards. These are huge cards. Plus you're going to need room for charts. You're going to need room for where to roll your dice. You're going to need a microphone, a camera, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So that option is just not doable for me. Okay. So I've been thinking, I love this game. I love the speed of the game. I love everything about this game until I roll a five. Every time I roll a five, it's like dread coming up. Oh God. Now it's going to take us five minutes 
to take care of this one little problem. Okay. Occasionally, if it happens, like if it's like a rare play or something, I don't mind doing that. But like literally every sixth roll, you have to do a defensive check because it's on a five. Every time you roll a five on a six sided dice, you're going to be checking defense. So it happens all the time. I rolled three fives in a row the other night. And it was just like, oh my God, this is just going to drive me crazy. So again, I'm not here to complain. This is not a jester's rant. This is not a jester's complaint. This is none of that. Okay. This is jester saying, here's the issue I have. Okay. I know there's other people out there that also feel the same way because I've emailed and talked to some people about this and I'm offering suggestions, okay, uh, and moving forward, how can we fix this? And hopefully, like I said, start a discussion. Maybe that somebody will email this to the designer or post it on the forums or whatever. And maybe the designer will come and watch this video and say, oh, yay, that's a pretty good idea. I could do that. And that's a great idea. All right. So I've got like four different options already. Four different options that I've come up with using my noggin to fix this problem. So the problem, again, is it might not be a problem for you and you don't mind looking that up and you're flipping through the cards and all that. That's great. Then you don't have a problem. But I know there's other people like me. Enjoy the flow of the game. You're playing. You're getting your result. Play. Rolls. Roll. Result. Roll. Result. Roll. Result. And then you got to stop and shuffle through cards to find a result. And it just slows the game down to a crawl. Okay. It's kind of my issue I had with deep drive baseball back in the day. A few versions ago okay uh it's kind of the same thing you got a great game and a great system and then you bog it down on something that doesn't need to, to bog it down so this is this is my suggestions on how we can try to fix it going forward and what i will be doing for myself now i'm hoping that there's enough support for people for others out there like myself that say, yes, this is an issue with the fives and doing the range checks. And, you know, if there's a way to get around that, we should try to get around it. Okay. It's like it, a perfect example. This is a perfect example is play ball baseball. Uh, do I have my tall pitcher cards? Um, happen to have cards sitting here out for play ball baseball all right now play ball baseball when it was first designed the first couple iterations they had these tall pitcher cards and then you would take the batter cards and you put the batter cards in there and you look at the matrix and, and you get your results and everything off of that and it was great the problem with this game the problem with play ball baseball is the exact same thing every time you had a check on a player's stat for a defense, you had to go through your stack of players out there, look for the results and blah, blah, blah. So what he, brilliant, what they did was they added all the players with all their stats on the tall player card. Cause this used to be just blank. It used to just be blank. So now when I'm playing, I can put the card on there, I roll, and if I need to check something, all I have to do instead of looking through the deck or looking through the stack is to simply look at this and say, oh, there's your player. There's the rating I need. And this is what it is. Boom. Without having to go through the stack. It's quick and it's easy and it's an intelligent way of fixing the problem. So again, play ball baseball. There was an issue, a major issue, right? Enough people complained about it or enough people were concerned about it or whatever, and the designer said, you know what? You're probably right. What can we do to fix it? What, you know, I'm not changing the game. We're not asking anyone to change the game. We're not asking anyone to make additions. We're not, all we're asking for, is there a better way, okay? Is there a better way to do defensive checks than having to go through the player cards that are on the table and slow the game down? So this is what I've come up with 
so far. Four different suggestions. In fact, I did. I thought of one on the way home from work, and I said, that'll work too. Let's do this. I got home, made the file, and then started the recording for you guys. So literally, I mean, things are still uh, coming and thinking about ways to make this better. So instead of having to go through the stack and find the, okay, who's it? it's a catcher. I need to find his catcher file. I need to see what it is, blah, 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 right? That is the problem. So obviously, the simplest and easiest thing to do is create a just a regular sheet that you can print out that has all of the different informations, right? So here's all the different, this is, this is all it is, right? Is the different um, results on the player card. So in right field, center field, left field, uh, third base, shortstop, second base, first base, pitcher, and catcher. You have all those, and then all you do is print this out, and then you simply write on here, you know, my player at third base is a 550, 550 to 552, and then a 53 is a 553 to 557, and then a single and a 558, and then on a 559 is an error. So you can just write in the player's, um, the player's uh, numbers, right? So, I mean, that is like the simplest form of fixing the problem is we'll just create a sheet. You can spend the time to write it down. You can spend the time to put the information in, right? And then you'd have it and you just put this on your table. You print it out two-sided. So you have one team on one side, you have the other team on the other side. And you just have to do that every time before you play your game. And it'll take you like literally just a couple minutes as you're going through the lineups, so you just write down, okay, I'm left fielder. What's his, what's his, What's his numbers? What's his center field numbers? You know, and I'm taking like five minutes to do, and then you'll have both teams done and you're ready to play, right? So that's like the simplest solution is just to create a sheet that has everything, all the different ratings on it. And all you have to do is just put that information in, okay? Then I decided, oh, that's a great idea, but you know what? A lot of people, you know, here's, here's the deficit, right? Anytime you change pitchers, Anytime you change players, positions, uh, pinch hits, everything, obviously you're going to have to go in and adjust your sheet every single time. So that's kind of the downside. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy. But of course, on the downside is anytime you make a change, pitcher, batter, whatever, then you're going to have to go in and edit your sheet every time. So your, your sheet might, you know, you probably will only be able to use a sheet for a game because you're going to be scratching things off and this, that. I mean, you can laminate this. Take it, get it laminated, and then once it's laminated, you could use erase markers or whatever, which might work for you. I mean, there's lots of ways to do it. So that's that's one suggestion I, th I come up with, which is, let's just do that. And then, of course, to go along with that, it's basically the same file, but in this case, I have two boxes for, obviously, the starter, and then if he gets replaced or whatever. And so you can put the players' names in there. That's the only difference. And then, of course, a bunch of, for the pitcher names, and then for the catcher and all the other positions, it's basically the same idea, the same the same process. It's just slightly different in that I, I figured some people may want players' names in there and some people don't care about having the players' names in there. So I made just two files. It only took like literally 20 minutes. I made both of these files in an hour today, right? I made both of these files in like an hour. It didn't take very long. I ain't doing it all, Red Sox fan. So... We got two different options with just printing out a sheet, right? So, I mean, the designer could just create these sheets and have them available. You could download, you could print them out. And then before your game, you just, you're just going to write in all the information. Boom. And, and you're ready to go in five minutes, a little bit of setup time. But again, the only downside is anytime you make a pitching change, you're going to have to adjust it because, you know, every player is different, which you'll see. All right, so then I decided to get brilliant on this, and you guys know Fall Classic is one of my all-time favorite, and the reason it's one of my all-time favorite is because of the defensive sheets that it uses, and it first introduced to the world was, hey, let's take all of our defensive matrix for a team, we're going to put it on an 8.5 by 11, you print it out, and you'll have all the information on that team right there at your fingertips. 
brilliant idea. I literally think almost every game out there, almost every single game out there should take this idea to heart, right? To heart. It should be standard in the sports game community when a sports sim releases a new game, defensive sheets could should come with it. As we know, second uh, season ticket baseball did not come with any defensive sheets. So what I did was literally make defensive sheets for I'm playing the 20, 2001 Seattle Mariners, right? So what I did was I created a defensive sheet and I just literally data input and I got Seattle and I got Oakland and I got Texas. Obviously the teams are playing early in the season and literally all I did was take the players' names and information and put them in. And what they are is uh, we will share with you guys uh, maybe a desktop here that so you can see what we're talking about because it's kind of hard with the background flashing in your face like that. I apologize for that. Um, but we are going to show you where is let's um, let's go here and here we go. All right. So uh, now I just got to find the. That's not the right one. There is that the right one. That is the right one. So that's basically it. Boom. There you go. So what I had printed out as you can see, and these are literally just the defensive sheets that were created through Fall Classic. I made kind of my own version of it, and I, I used that base template, and I started creating defensive sheets for Status Pro Baseball, for you know all the different games that I was using. So I decided to create a defensive sheet for season uh, sec, um, season ticket baseball. Sorry, season ticket baseball. And so I created just a base template for that where you're literally just take is just data entry at this point. Now that I've created the sheet, all you have to do is just find the player, find out what his results are, and then input it in, right? So if we were to look like in left field, Mike Cameron on a zero to four it's going to be a fly ball out to left field and the runner if there's a runner at third he must try to test uh the arm of mike cameron on a five to seven it's just a fly ball out to, to left field and on an eight to nine it's just a single and the rest you know the rest goes just like that so it's shortstop carlos gillen oh to two it's a six four three double play a three to four it's a six the three out, it's a five to eight, it's a single, and on a six to nine, I'm sorry, just on a nine, it's an E6. So basically all I did at this point was just data entry, take the information from the cards and put it on my template so that way I can now have it. And when I go and I just, you know, file print, right, file, oops, file print, right? It's, it's just a one sheet page, and you literally have everyone on the team at your fingertips. And it's, it's just, it's basically just a defensive sheet that's at your fingertips for the whole team, right? So that, that is an option too, right? The downside with this, okay, we took, we showed you this, right? We showed you this and the different variations of this. This is just simply just adding the, the numbers in and printing these out, right? Second option is defensive sheets. The downside with defensive sheets is obviously it's going to take you like 10 to 15 minutes per team. And then you're literally done. You're done. Like I'm playing Seattle 2021. I'm going to be playing 162 games with this team. I can spend 10 minutes to put the information in because I'm going to be using this information all the time. I'm going to be playing against the Oakland A's like 18 times during the season. So why wouldn't I spend 10 or 15 minutes inputting all their information and just having it on a sheet ready to go? Now, I don't know the designer. I don't know his process of des designing or whatever, 
I don't know if there's a way that he could automate it. I know other game manufacturers, when they decided to create defensive sheets, they said, yeah, we can do it. No problem. All we have to do, you know, we can just add that in the process of when we're creating our cards. I can input that out to an Excel file and then I can just print that out. Okay. I don't know the process he uses. I don't know if this would be something easy or this would be something hard for him to do. I don't know. I'm just saying for me and for most people, sure, it's a little upfront, right? After effort. I literally, in like two hours today at work, data entry, I got like five teams done, right? So I can play Seattle the first like 15 games, first 20 games of the season and, you know, take a break from data entry and then, you know, come back to it later on. So it's just a matter of just data entry, adding, adding in the data and just saying, hey, here we go. How you doing, Dwayne? Good to see you. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Good to see you. So it's just a defensive sheet. That's all it is. It's this data entry. Somebody's got to put the data in. If we can automate that when the designer is creating his seasons, if there's a way to automate it and put the data in there for us, that would save us a lot of time and trouble and effort. I don't know if it's doable or not, but creating a defensive sheet, obviously the advantages of a defensive sheet would be, I literally have every single player, every single player that I need at my fingertips for the team. This is every single player you see on the screen who's got a card in second season, uh, or second season, season ticket baseball, sorry. Um, so those are all the players with cards and I just went through and I just said, okay, this is what his ratings is. And this is what this is and blah, 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 blah. And then I saved the file and then I, I did the same thing for Oakland and I did the same thing for Texas. And you can, again, you can kind of see, they just turn out they're an eight and a half by 11 sheet, right? And if you're smart, what you would do is you would just put them like back to back like this. Oh, you guys can't see. Hang on a second. Let me uh, adjust the camera. There we go. So you just print them out like this. So I got one sheet, right? And I just have it. I just have this sheet standing up and I'm rolling the game and I'm playing. And then when it's the other team's turn, I just flip, I just flip it over to the other team and I'm just keep rolling the game. And then anytime a five comes up, oh, it's on Brett Boone is second base. He rolled a four. I just look, boom. Brett, Brett Boone at second base, he rolled a four, and that's going to be a four, six, three, double play. Boom, it literally takes me five seconds. The time that it takes is obviously the 10 to 15 minutes to actually data entry the information into this. So that is option number three for you guys. Again, I said I had four different options. This is not a gesture ran. This is not me complaining. This is me seeing can we get some dialogue going to make it easier for everyone out there every time we play season ticket baseball if there's a way to automate the five roll instead of having to go through the stack and find the player's card and look at the card look at his little matrix on the card is there a way that the designer might be able to automate this process for us right or do we just say you know what let's just print these sheets out and then we just put the numbers in herself. For me, this is a great idea. The problem is, um, again, if you play 162 games and you're spending five minutes to do this per game, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time in the long run where if you would have just you know, spent the 10 minutes or 15 minutes per team and just data entered, data enter, data entry, data enter all the information in, then you'd have it. And, and I think it would be in the long run, it would be less time than going every time you go to create a game and, and then trying to keep track of it. And then, and then of course, every time you make a pitching change, you're going to have to go in and change it. You're going to have to check. You're going to have to edit your sheet every single time. This might be great for some people, and, and it's probably, it's also a great, uh, I mean, maybe we, maybe, maybe we just take all of these 
as in the answer, right? Maybe we take this defensive sheet. We also make these available so people can download these and, and if they don't want to do the work for the defensive sheet. But then I have another idea, right? So this, this is another one of those great ideas that ends up being, uh, hmm, I don't want to say a waste, but it's like, it's it's got a lot of data and information, but there's it's it, there's a lot of blank areas on here, right? And I was thinking on the way home, well, what if we just take if there was a way that the designer could automate it, so that it took like a, all the left fielders and the center fielders and right fielders and just added them to that uh, sheet? Because as you know, a lot of people, including myself. We put the pitchers, because the pitchers are 100s and 200s, right? So we take the 100s and 200s, and we put that card out. And then next to that card, we put the 3 and the 400s, right? So it, wouldn't it be cool if there was a way to put the 5s and the 600s together? I was thinking on the way home. See, I'm already thinking about ways to improve this or whatever. So I got we got these nice sheets, right? We got the awesome defensive sheet. Oops, where are the defensive sheets, right? Awesome defensive sheets. Uh, but then I was thinking, hey, wait a minute. Maybe we take one, two, three, four, and we combine five and six together. Well, five is that stupid look at the card roll and six. Well, six is a waste because you have all this blank area on it. I said, there's probably a way that we can take this sheet and edit it and make it so that we can add five onto it. And so literally, I got home, I created this, this sheet I'm going to show you in like four minutes. And I'm like, yes, I like that idea as well. Oops, where did that sheet go? That's a great question. Oh, there it is right there. So that is, boom. You have, again, one, two, three, four, right? So everyone wants to play it one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, again, five and six, fives are your defensive calls, right? Five is your defensive calls, which will literally be if the designer could put this information on the left side of this Safeco field sheet, if you just list like the top three or four players at every position, right? So we have first base, second base, third base, shortstop, left field, center field, and right field. Obviously, you don't need um, pitcher because your pitcher cards are going to be out there. So you don't need the defensive card for the pitcher. Um, and we would add the catcher in, which I didn't get around to doing, but I would just, I would literally just slide these down a little bit give me a little bit more space right like just the, like the top two or three players in each position right and and then we just go back to our matrix here and we find our catcher and we say okay let's add our catchers in here boom 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 we say okay and literally this is how this is how difficult this should not be right it's not this is not rock. This is not rock and science here. This is this is screenshots. This is screenshots, right? And I'm sure if they're you know a fancy programmer or something, maybe they can do this even better and make it look better and do all that fun stuff, right? So we'll just um, we'll just uh, put this like this, right? So now I can just add the catchers to my sheets and I'll have them. Put this away. Okay, and, oh, come on, leave me alone, go away. There we go. So we got literally catchers, first base, second base, third base, shortstop, left, center, and right. Again, you don't need the, you don't need the pitcher information on here because the pitcher card, you're going to have the pitcher card in front of you. You're always going to have the pitcher card right in front of you, so you don't need the pitchers on here. You just need all the... You need everyone else, right? So if you just take 
everyone else and you just take like the top two or three in each position and automate it and put it right on this sheet, right? Then you have, you have the process where you have one, two, which is the pinchers, followed by three, four, followed by five and six. So anytime you roll one, two, three, four, five, or six, it's just going to be, you know, just one, two, three, four, five, six. Which sheet do you look at? You look at the pitcher card, you look at the batter card, or do you look at this sheet? And I thought, wow, that's a great idea because now, okay, so obviously, if there was a way for them to automate this for us, that would be great. Otherwise, somebody's going to have to data entry all that in, and then, of course, do what I just did, which is screenshot everything and then copy and paste it over, which is, a, you know, it's a pain in the ass, to be honest, right? It's just time-consuming, pain in the ass, repetitive stuff. But you can see, I didn't make this Safeco field sheet much smaller. All I did was take every all the objects and move them around, and you can see how much space there are available over on the left-hand side for the defensive checks for the players. So uh, let me um, let me uh, check the chat here. Doing well, thanks. I've been very busy, uh, Jimmy. I like it. Defensive sheets solve the biggest headache for me. Digging through the lineup to find the results of a position challenge. Great idea. Jim said, I would think it would be plenty a universal thing. It's kind of like having war game with no combat results table. Yeah, exactly. You would think defensive sheets, uh, again, I, I, I literally in two hours, like I said, I created the, the template, right? I, let me, um, I created the template today at work. And then all it was after I created the template was just data entry, right? Data entry, my, typing in Mike Cameron, finding out what is his F7R3 question mark explanation. Is it zero, zero to one, zero to two, zero to three, zero to four, zero to five, whatever. And then putting that in and putting it in under F7. And then putting, you know, it's basically just looking at the cord and then putting in the information. That's pretty much all it is. Right. And the same thing for uh, the other ones, too. Right. So um, I just went in and uh, let me go to my downloads here and pull up Oakland. Right. So I did Oakland. And let me pull that one up. There we go. And you can see. Uh, it's Oakland's the same thing. This is literally every card that comes in season ticket baseball. I, all I did was go through the PDF and just went, okay, player, um, batters, extra batters, pinchers, extra pinchers, and just input it all in. That's all I did. I just put them all in there and, and then just save the file. And then of course I printed it out. So now I literally, I can play Seattle and Oakland, just have these sheets on my desk. And then anytime I need to look for a check, I just flip it over, right? I just flip it over and flip it over. I don't know. This is just an, this is just a uh, this is just to get a discussion going. Hopefully with the designer again. Maybe somebody will see this, send it to the designer. Maybe the designer will watch this sometime. Maybe you know somebody will post it on the forums or whatever. I I'm not again. I'm not complaining about season ticket baseball. It's a great game. I recommend it. It's two thumbs up. I just hate, I would play it more, right? But I literally hate every time I roll a five and I have to spend all that time going through trying to find the card that I need just so I can look at their little matrix when I could simply, you got a great game, roll results, roll results, Roll result, and then you have every time you roll a five, it's literally. Oh, hang on a second now. Hang on, hang on. I gotta find second baseman, and, and uh, let's see where he, where is he? Um, oh, uh, oh, there he is. And his uh, um, it was his eight, okay. Uh, yeah, it just no, no. It just takes away from the game. It's it it slows the game down. The, the the best thing about this game is the flow of it. And then you 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 put the brakes on that for this this five check. No, no, whatever you're doing, no, change it. Find a way around that. And what I what I realized 
by looking at all the player cards is there's only four results for every position, right? It's either, um, if you're, you're in the infield, it's either a double play, a play at first, a single or an error. Those are the only four results. If you're, you know, first base, second base, shortstop, or third base. And in the outfield, it's simply either a fly ball out that the, if there's a runner in third, has to challenge or is challenging your arm. Or it's just a fly ball out, or it's a double, or it's a single. Those are the those are the four those are the four results that you get, right, for the outfield, and also the four results you get for the infield. For the catchers, you get strikeouts, you get pop outs or fly outs to the catcher, you get walks, and you get pass balls. So you get those four results. So every defensive check is checking to see which one of those four results. It is, right? So why couldn't you take that and export that into an Excel sheet and then take that Excel sheet and copy and paste it right onto, right onto your, uh, your um, ballpark card? You know, you would just take that information that was exported into Excel and then just take that information screenshot it and put it right into um put it right onto the left side again the reason you you would do anything you want with it right you can do anything you want with it but i just think and i've seen every i've seen many people play this and everyone seems to play it the same way the pitchers on the left hand side because they're one and 200 then you have the Batter card, which they put on the right, which is three to four hundred. So that way, when you're reading it, it's one, two, three, four. So it's just like reading a book. One, two, three, four. You're just one, two, three, four. And then everyone puts the six sheet over on the right hand side because it's one, two, three, four, five, which is that defensive thing, and then six, right? So if you could put five and six together on that sheet, it just seems like it's it's a match made in heaven. It's just a match made in heaven. Let me um, let me check and see what's happened in the chat. Um, someone could create a generic PDF and put it on the site. I, I'm just, I mean, there there's four different suggestions that I've given people on what we could do about it. I don't know what the answer ultimately should be. I think it should be. Uh, a combination of everything that we've come across or that I've talked about. I think, you know, having, having just a simple, Hey guys, here's a sheet. You can download it for free, print it out. And then you can just input the numbers. If you don't want to have to look through cards, right. And maybe 80 and 90% of the people be happy and fine with that. Right. Every 80 or 90% of the people. Right. And also, we can add in where oh you can put the players names in there boom and anytime you make a cha change or whatever so it's kind of like a scorecard for season ticket baseball right so with or without you could have two different downloads with or without player names do you want to add player names or not a lot of people will probably not even i don't know, i don't i'm not writing players names down i don't i just want to know what the information is right so for a fly ball to center field, for a fly ball to center field, you're only ever going to get that that if that result. One of those four: fly ball to left, fly ball to right, third base, shortstop, second base, first base. Th these are every position only has four results, right? So you just take these four results and you print this sheet out. And you're ready to go, or like I said, you do the same thing. But this, you know, you write in all the starters, and then if they come out, you got a spot for that. Same thing with the pitchers. Only downside to this, again, is every time somebody comes in around the game, you're going to have to change your sheet every single time. If you forget, then you'll be using the wrong wrong player results. Then, of course, second option, or well, those first two options is this. Third option is defensive sheets. Creating defensive sheets, as I talked about, 
as I talked about, for you guys that are just joining, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover it one more time. Play ball baseball, right? The tall pitcher cards, right? And what it, what you used to do with it is just put the player card in there. You have the pitcher card in there. And same issue that play ball baseball had. When it first was released, I've got season files that I could show you guys, right? The problem is every time there was a defensive check that you had to look up something, it was a pain in the ass. Slowed the game down, everything came to a crawl and everything, right? And a lot of people complained about it. Hey, I don't like play ball baseball because it just, I don't like to do the defensive checks. And so what they decided to do was Put all the data for all the players on their card. This used to be just a big blank area, right? This used to just be blank. And then all of a sudden the designer was like, hey, what if we took all the important information and just put it on the card? Wouldn't that be helpful? And now anytime I have a defensive check or I need to look at something, all I do is take a peek up. Oh, there it is. There's the result. Boom. And you're done. And it makes it literally changes it's a game changer. I hate to say it, but it's a game changer. Without this, play ball baseball is maybe a four or five out of 10. Maybe a four or five out of 10. I hate to say it without this. But after they created and they decided, oh yeah, we, we could, duh, maybe what we should do is we should take all the important data that you need and put it on the card so it's right there in front of your face. And they did that. And now all of a sudden it's like an eight or nine out of 10. It makes such a difference in how the game plays. Again, I don't mind stopping in the middle of the game to check for um, you know, uh, a rare play or looking on this chart. You're spending a few minutes with the play, okay? Every once in a while, that's great. But literally, every time I roll a five, every time I roll a five on my six-sided dice, I don't want it to take like five minutes to to resolve that one play. Cause it's like literally, like I said, the other night I rolled three fives in a row and it slowed the game down. That inning took like 15 minutes just to play that one inning. And it shouldn't do that. You have a great game and a great system. It's roll and get a result, roll, and get a result, roll, get a result. Roll, oh, we got a rear play. We got to spend a few minutes. We'll find out what it is. Boom, roll, result, roll, result, roll, result. And then all of a sudden you roll a five and it's like, ah, it just slows it down to a crawl and it kills the game. I will literally not play this game if this doesn't get fixed somehow, right? If I've got to data entry every... If I've got a data entry every single team into, I will do that. I will literally do the 2001. I will data entry. I've already done, like I said, five teams already done. That's like, that's like what? Uh, a sixth of the, uh, of the teams already, right? It's, it's not going to, it's a couple hours here, a couple hours there. You know, it'll be like 10 to 12 hours of total time. I'll have, uh, I'll have defensive sheets, my own defensive sheets for 2001, which, you know, would be great and i i would be i would be ecstatic to have and i don't have a problem with that i don't mind doing that it's it's a few hours out of my life that but like seriously i again <laughs> i i think we need a discussion with the designer and going forward and see if there's a way that some of this can be automated. Again, I've talked to other designers and other games and they had issues and they automated a fix for it. They've automated a fix for it. I don't know the process this designer uses. I don't know if this is possible. All I'm saying is we should, should, should suggest is there a way this is possible or is there a way that the, you can create something like this or is there a way we can have people do you know data imp input and create defensive sheets but then they're 
downloadable for everyone to use. I, I don't know the answer. I'm just saying we need to discuss it, make it available for everyone out there, and and see what the designer, the designer might say, no, I can't do Jack, sorry. And that's fine if that's, if, that's, if he says, so, you know, I, I can't, I can't do it. I just, you know, there's no way to automate it and it would take hundreds of hours to do and I'm not going to do it. Fair enough. I, no problem. Okay, move on. What, what else can we do? Can, can we get, can we get people to volunteer to do different seasons? And then can we post that information? Would that be okay? Right? Uh, is there a way that once you create the file, you can just copy that and post it on your Safeco field or your ballpark cards? I guess they're called ballpark cards. Is there a way to do that? Is there a way to, is there a way to manage that? Is there a way that uh, is, is doable? And if he says no, okay, then it's either A on us as fans of the game to either do it ourselves right? Or B, not do it and either put up with it. Like I said, I mean, half the people out there might, it might not be an issue every time they roll a five. They don't mind going through the stack of cards to look for it and slowing the game down and they might be fine with that. But I'm just saying for me, I'm, if, that, if that's the way it's going to be going forward, then I'm not going to play anymore because I don't like, I hate, in fact, it's not that I don't like it. I think it's a detriment to the game. With this in the game, with this in the game, it's a second, a, not second season, season ticket baseball is maybe a five out of 10, right? Maybe a five out of 10, the way it's designed now. If there's a way to fix it with defensive sheets or with this combination of uh, um, ballpark cards slash defensive information or whatever, uh, you know, if there's a way to fix it with that or with the defensive sheets or whatever, the game's like a nine out of 10. So uh, you literally are hurting your game keeping it this way. Literally, because I, I, I see comments in the chat, people that I don't know that, you know, are, are complaining about the same thing I'm complaining about. They literally hate that check every time a defensive role comes up. So if you want to keep it that way, great, but there's got to be a way to fix the problem. Just like Play Ball Baseball did, several other companies had issues with their games. They automated a fix for it. If you can automate a fix, we need to get the designer to do that. Right? We need to get, we need to find a way to have that happen. So, um, Big clue what's going on. Uh, you ain't should <laughs> learn to play cricket. Jezza. Yeah, the, I, I, I would love a cricket game. I think that would be awesome. I know Tony's got one. And I, I, need to, I need to talk with Tony about sending me that cricket game because he's not doing anything with it. He's just hoarding it over there. Again, this is not me complaining. Second, I keep calling it a second season because, of, I mean, it's just on my brain for some reason. The season ticket baseball, good Lord. Season ticket baseball is a great game. It's fun. It's interesting. It's just every time you roll that five, it is just like nails on a chalkboard to me. I cannot stand it. I just it's read it, and it makes me not want to play the game. And so my solution is if I want to play the game, I'll create my little defensive sheets. Right, and I will input all the data, and it'll take me a long time, and maybe I'll get mad and aggravated and stop doing it at some point. But at this point, I'm like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and do that. It's a couple hours of time, and now I've got it. And so now I literally I can play Oakland and Seattle, and then Seattle plays Texas, and then Seattle plays in Oakland. Like they started the season playing Oakland two of the first three series they play Oakland. So I can play like the first 
nine games of the season by just these three se- season files. I already input in Texas and Anaheim, which are the, like the next couple teams coming up. So I've got like, I got like the first, almost like the first month of the season already done. So I can just, I can just start going to town. And then when I get a break, I get a couple free hours. I can go in and data entry and, and input the next couple teams that they're going to play. Uh, you know, I don't even have that many printed out because, of course, you have to have all the cards and you got to print them all. I only have like uh, through through the Yankees, I think. Um, they play Anaheim, then they play a few other. Uh, I forget who they play, but I have, you know, I only have like maybe eight teams printed out anyways. So I don't have like the whole season file printed out. So anyways, um, that is my suggestions. Hopefully if somebody out there finds this helpful and they can send it to whoever designed, developed this game, put post it on the forums, post it over there. I don't do any of that stuff. I, I I'm way too busy for that nonsense. Um, I am way too busy for that nonsense. I got too many other things to be doing. And I mean, literally 586 different games, right? If your game is a pain in the ass, it's going to go in the trash can. and I'm just going to move on and go into the next game. So I hate to say that, but that's just the reality for a lot of people nowadays, right? That's just the reality. Um, if your game is good game, then a lot of people will play it. And how much lasting power is your game going to have when nobody wants to play it because of your crappy defensive rules and your defensive matrix thing. I've given suggestions on how to fix it. Four different suggestions. Hopefully one of them will get somewhere down the line. Uh, But we definitely, again, going forward, I know I would play this game a lot more and I'm actually going to play the game again tonight. We played it last night, but I'm going to play it tonight with my defensive matrix charts and we're going to show you the difference in the game speed and the delays and what you can do and how you can do things um because it's it's literally going to be night and day i think i saved myself half a excuse me a half an hour yesterday in yesterday's game a half an hour between all of the five checks Right. And looking up the cards and getting the cards and then putting the cards back in position, you know, and all that stuff. And then you have to worry about it. Right. Because every time you're going through your stack, you always, you know, pull the card out and then, oh, you know, where was that card? Was was this on top or was this on top? You know, you can mess up your lineups. It's just it doesn't need to be that way. You can literally have all of these matrices on, you know, even if you just. Had it blank. Now there's an idea, right? Hmm. Right? Let me think about this. Let me see if there's a way I can create this like super quickly. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking. See, I'm already thinking. I'm already I'm already using my noggin again. So what we do here is, is instead, let's get rid of those, right? So if he was to just print like a blank information, uh, I need to, yeah, no, 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 I want, oh, it. that's interesting. No, I don't want, uh, okay, I got you. All right, undo, 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 go away. All right, so what I have to do is I have to screenshot this instead of, um, right. Stop what you're doing. All right, let's start again. Screenshot this time. There you go. And if you're really good to the screenshots like me, and you've done it um, like literally a million times, this shouldn't take like but more than a few few minutes. Like literally creating this sheet only cost uh only took me like a few minutes, right? But let's say the designer just puts this on here. Um, text wrap in front of text. There we go. All right. And he just has this on there like that. And then we could just write in. We could write, we could literally write it in ourselves. Oh, we got hot girls in the chat. Nice. Lovely. Lovely. 
And we were going to put this user in timeout. See you later, alligator. All right, there we go. So if we just had like a matrix on here like that, right? And then we also had like first base on here. And what I'm going to do is just take the animation off. So I, you guys see my what what I'm going for, right? You just you just create like a, a nice sheet here on the left hand side where you can just put in like the top two or three from each position, right? The top two or three from each position. Ah, there's, I mean, I I can't say. There's got to be a way to do this because I don't know programming and I don't know automation and I, I'm not an Excel expert or anything like that. But I would think there's got to be a way to automate this quickly and easily. And somebody out there might be way better or more proficient than me and be able to say, oh, yeah, I can do that in like five minutes at work. Right. And I could put that on your sheet and, and have it done for you in, in seconds. Right. I mean, it makes sense. But of course, the designer probably has some kind of a, a template that he's using for his, for his, uh, you know, his sheets probably have some kind of template. So he's going to have to change all the template to squeeze everything over to the right, because obviously we want it one, two, three, four, five, six, and we want five on the left and six on the right. I mean, it just makes sense you'd be able to do this. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense to me. But a lot of things make sense to me and that, that don't get done. And if more people would listen to me, there'd be a lot better things out there. Um, if baseball is good enough for Harry Wright and Harry Chadwick, then it's good enough for me, says Big Clue. <laughs> hey, Tebow, what's going on? Good point on the five roll. I don't think about it until you mentioned it. That would be old, to be honest, though. I'm getting tired of how play ball does it with their sheets too. Yeah, I mean, it's just, again, I'm not ranting. I'm not raving. I'm not complaining. It's, I'm just saying we need a discussion with the developer. I've suggested multiple suggestions. Defensive, I think, I think the key, I think the key, to be honest, is defensive matrix sheets, just like this one for each team. It should be an automated process because all you're doing is you're referencing, right? Uh, you're referencing data cells and all you're going to do is then input those cells into your defensive sheets, right? And, and literally it should be automated to be able to do that. And then I have this sheet. I did this myself at work. I did, like I said, if you're Tebow, I know, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I know Tebow just showed up a little bit ago. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of going over um, what I had done or, or said earlier because Tebow wasn't here, but I, I literally at work today, I created the template, which took, you know, took an hour, maybe an hour and a half, whatever. And then it was just, okay, it's data entry time. It's data entry time. Okay. Take this player's card, get the information, put his name in there get his results, put it in, go to the next player, the next, the next, the next, the next. And it literally like 15, 20 minutes per team. Boom, done. I had like two or three teams done in an hour. I had five teams done in a couple hours. It's not, it's just data entry to put it in. And then now I've got it. I printed it out. I've got it for the rest of the season. I will not have to do anything with Seattle, anything with Oakland or Texas or Anaheim. Uh, and who was the other team I did? Somebody else. I can't even remember. So, I mean, there should be a way to, to create these defensive sheets. They're all right there to go. Obviously, my other best suggestion was we use 1-2, which is the pitcher guard, right? And then right next to that, 3-4. And then why not combine 5 and 6 on the same sheet? Why do you need all of this blank area on this sheet, you don't, right? Condense it all down, condense it all down, 
and then put your information on here from all your different um I'm not going to save this. I'm going to show you what the original file looks like. Uh, no, we're not going to save that. Hang on. Hang on. Hang. Hang on. Where is it? Here, uh, there it is. Seattle. There we go. All right. No, that's, is that what I want? No, that's not what I wanted. Anyways, where is... Oh, it's the Word document. That's what it is. Word document. And that is Mirror's Ballpark Sheet. There we go. So this is the original file before I, I, just, I just deleted a bunch of stuff on it, right? So you have your defensive matrix. You have your defensive matrix over on your left-hand side, which is your fives. And then on the right-hand side, is your safe go field stuff. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, just like you'd read it in a book. And on the left hand side, you'd have your five and your sixes all ready to go on the same sheet. And it wouldn't take up any more space because you're still gonna need this sheet out, right? This this sheet you're gonna need somewhere anyways. You have to have this sheet. So adding this information to the sheet isn't gonna make a bigger fit footprint for those people out there, right? Yeah, I mean, Tebow says the same thing. He, he didn't even think about it, but he, he did not like the five rolls either. I don't think anyone out there that I know of likes to stop what they're doing to find a card to look for their little matrix. It slows the game down and it breaks the flow. Roll, result, roll, result, roll, result. And then all of a sudden, oh shit, I rolled a five. It's going to take us five minutes to figure this one out. And it just breaks the flow of the game. And it doesn't need to be like that. There's other, I'm suggesting other ways to fix this problem. I'm suggesting ways to make it easier. I mean, as simple, as simple as it comes. Right? As simple as it comes. I created a sheet today at work, five, maybe ten minutes, a couple screenshots, and I've got it where you can literally print this out. You can put all your player numbers in there. It's gonna take you like five minutes. You can print it out double sided. You have both teams and you're ready to go. Of course, again, downside, it's gonna be you're gonna have to do this every time. And anytime you make a player change in the game, you have to edit your sheet. So it's doable, it's quick, it's easy. Some players might love it, be able to do it, be done with it, not do anything, right? Obviously, the best solution would be defensive matrix sheets, but somebody's got a data entry that if it can't be automated. I believe, and I could be wrong, it should be able to be automated, right? You shouldn't be able to run a batch process and create these files from the data that he's gonna have anyways he should be able to create these data entry sheets literally by just having it run the process and let it do its thing. And then we have these sheets. He includes these sheets. We print them out and we're ready to go. Otherwise, there's going to be a bunch of schleps like me spending hundreds of hours data entering. And I'm not going to do that, right? I've already said I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing this game unless it gets, unless this gets fixed. It's got to get fixed. I cannot stand the five. It takes way too long. It messes up the flow of the game and it just taints you out of the, out of what's going on. And I just, I don't enjoy the game with the fives and that's why I haven't played it more. And I think now that I've got my matrix defensive matrix cards and I'm ready to go. I think I, I can play this now. I can play literally. I can play probably two games tonight. In the same time, it took us one to play one game last night because of the how slow it was reading and looking up. And of course, you know we're not talking about professional. We're not talking about professional cards with glossy finishes, right? We're talking about cardstock. And what does cardstock do? Cardstock sticks together. So you guys know if you you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Anybody that knows about cardstock. When you're trying to just 
thumb through, right? You literally, it does, it. it's not like a quick thing, right? If these were professional cards with a glossy finish, you might be able to look through your stack, lickety split, right? Lickety split. But a card stock, card stock, no, you can't do that. There is no way to go through a, 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 a sheet uh, of, you know, 10 players or whatever um, quickly with card stock. No way to do that. You have, you, you have, you have to, you know, separate the card. You're licking your fingers. You're trying to, oh, where, you know, can't find the player. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. We all know it. There's got to be a way to fix it. Let's just get the designer to figure out a way to make it better, make his game better, right? This is, this is about taking a game that's currently a 5 out of 10 and turning it into a 9 out of 10. That is how it's a game changer for me, right? It's a game changer for me. I will literally not play this game if it doesn't get fixed one way or the other. I will not play this game the way it's currently designed. I'm just saying, I will not do it. I will spend my own time and effort creating the sheets for 2000, 2001. And I will do that if I have to, so I can play the 2001. But after that, I'm done. I'm not doing any more. That, that'll be it. And, and you know what? I say that now, but two months from now, I might be like, you know what? I'm not going through all this trouble to continue playing this season. But I'm not going to play the, the way it's currently designed. So it, I'm hoping that we can open a dialogue with the designer to see if there's something we can do to make it better for not only myself, but for everyone. It's not just me that complains about these range checks. And it's not something that happens like out of the blue once a game. It's literally every sixth roll. And if you're like me, you roll like three or four fives in a row. And you're literally spending like 20 minutes in an inning, right, to, for one inning because you you rolled a lot of fives. And then you can literally get through like three innings in like two minutes because you didn't roll any fives. So you tell me what the problem is. It's the way that it's the, the way the fives are designed. It's horrible and needs to be fixed for the love of God. It needs to be fixed. Um, designer season ticket is Clay's Dresden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I'm like I said, somebody that's more ambitious than me posts this video and, or sends a link to Dre, uh, Clay or whatever and somebody gets a hold of him and says, hey, I think Jester's got some cool ideas, uh, you know, or you might want to watch this video and see if there's something you can do for him or whatever. And hopefully going forward, maybe that would be awesome. And maybe there is something he can do. But if he says, nope, there ain't nothing I can do about that, I'm not, I, you know, it's going to cost it's going to cost me way too much money to do that. Or it's going to, you know, a lot of time and trouble and effort to redesign everything. No, I'm not doing that. You might say, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, it's your game. You do, you do you buddy. You do what you want. And I, I just, I think there's a lot of people that would play this game and enjoy this game. If it wasn't for this one issue, if you want to make your game better, hopefully there's a way to, we can do that. All right, guys, I have got to run. I just want to bring this out. We'll be doing a second season game here uh, probably around 20, 30 minutes from now. Hopefully, you'll stop back in and check it out. Until then, everyone, take care, my friends, and we'll see you guys real, real soon. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, check out the video later on. And uh, we'll see you all later.